Hi, I'm Joseph Huddle with Huddle Landscape Architecture for landscapingnetwork.com. So for this project for the irrigation, we used a combination of the uh, multi-stream rotors, which are water efficient. Um, we used drip systems in certain, certain areas that were narrower adjacent to the house. And then other areas we used uh, conventional pop-up spray heads where we had tight areas that uh, would benefit from that. Um, all of the automatic irrigation is tied to a uh, smart controller. In this case, it's a Weathermatic smart line. Um, smart controllers are the new thing now. They've been out for several years. Um, they're starting to be required in some instances, and uh, they, they program differently from a regular controller. Uh, on this one, you can have it on standard programming, or you can also go to auto-adjust. On the auto-adjust feature, instead of programming in hours and minutes and days for the, uh, the sprinklers to come on, you just designate in each zone the plant type, the soil type, the slope, and the type of irrigation you're using. And then the uh, smart controller is tied into a weather station that determines the needs of those plants based on that type of irrigation and that type of slope and soil type uh, based on the weather, whether it's been rainy and the, the amount of heat, evapotranspiration rate, and so on. So when we set up uh, these smart controllers, uh, we like to use the option of the standard programming initially so that we know that the controller is coming on. Um, Initially, when you first plant, you might need to come on every day or every other day. And so initially, we'll set up with standard programming with the minutes and the days for uh, the different stations to come on. Uh, but in parallel to that, then we also program in the soil types and the plant types and the irrigation types for the zones that once things are a bit rooted in, then we can um, tie it into the, uh, the automatic system that's based on the weather station and, uh, you know, see if there's any hiccups involved. And then we'll go take a look at the weather station. So as part of this uh, smart controller setup uh, includes a, a weather station. It involves a rain sensor and temperature sensors. And uh, this is wireless in this case, and it sends a signal back to the controller with the, uh, the weather data that determines how the plants are watered. Um, there are other options. Some of these smart controllers use a subscription service. Um, where the information is gathered locally from several different weather stations and then it's sent via satellite to the controller. So in those cases you're paying yearly for a subscription. Uh, there may be some advantage of that with uh, more points of monitoring the climate, but generally there's two, two ways to go with the smart controller, an on-site weather station or a subscription service. The main reason why people would use a, uh, the smart controller would be for water savings and money savings. On a, on a large site, it could save thousands of dollars a year and easily pay for itself. So in addition to the homeowner reasons for saving water, or saving money, um, many communities or jurisdictions are requiring a smart controller system be used in new irrigation or a new landscape installation. In addition to that, uh, many uh, water districts are um, having uh, providing financial incentives for homeowners to install such a system because it saves water over the long run. I'm Joseph Huddle for landscapingnetwork.com. Thanks for watching.